there. But I really want to answer this. Um, I've talked about Lacerdo's tree so many times. The tree, but it's a diagram of a tree by Domenico Lacerdo that compares Western liberalism to Eastern or Chinese Marxism. Um, it's one of the best graphics uh, that I've ever seen in my life. One of the best explanations of Marxism, um, visual explainers of Marxism I've ever seen. So this says, I messaged you a while back about it. I remember that. Uh, but th you did a TikTok a while ago, maybe the viewers of the link, but it was a tree of Marxism and the roots of the tree was the country's autonomy branches were other things like rights. It made me really consider Marxism as something I can relate to because I felt like an anti-imperialist for a long time. And at the core of anti-imperialism is global South autonomy or autonomy for any, any country being targeted by colonialism. So like Ireland, for example. Um, but yes, I found the tree the other day and I tell y'all what, I literally was like screaming, like jumping for joy when I found this tree, cause I haven't been able to follow, find it in forever. And I literally made it into an emote. So if you follow us, uh, like I'm going to start doing some more lives on TikTok, Um, and you can subscribe to people now on TikTok, and you get emotes for doing that custom emotes. So I made like 15 of them. And I'll have to add them on Twitch, too, for the, the Twitch subscribers. Um, but one of the emotes is the tree. And it says, you just got owned by Lacerdo's tree. So y'all are going to be able to say that in TikTok comments soon, hopefully. Um, if, if that's what the emotes are, I don't really know. But the Western liberal tradition, and this is in um, a larger essay that uh, Lacerdo wrote, um, incredible Italian Marxist, um, Marxist-Leninist tangy quote unquote um he went to china and wrote a big long essay about uh chinese marxism and how it's taught to kids actually um so he comes up with this graph uh midway through his essay it says liberation already championed by marx and Engels as um a part of the class struggle um find its foundation on thorough reinterpretation of sovereignty as the right to non-interference by other states um so they recognize that national sovereignty the right to self-determination the right of a people to determine their own system of governance um needs to come first that needs to be the primary principle marxist support because if you're colonized because if a foreign country dominates your politics um and your economy then there's no way to struggle for socialism, right? You're always going to be kept under the boot of imperialism and imperialism will stop the means of production from developing, um, which is largely what pushes the relations of production, the mode of production to change. Uh, developments of the means of production create the possibility for a new social system. Development of the means of production under capitalism creates the possibility for socialism. Um, but a lot of countries are held by... Um, imperialism and colonialism in a feudal state. Um, they aren't able to develop their own industry and their own infrastructure, and thus the relations of production remain stagnant. Um, so the Western liberal uh, tradition, it starts with individual mastery over private property. So these are the roots of the tree. This is what's in the U.S. Constitution. Right to private property, which is protected by the state, protected by the government, protected by the authority of society. Um, if you try and take somebody's private property, if the John Deere workers go into work tomorrow and they try and seize the factory, the police, the state, the police who are an armed body of the state, um, are going to come and shut it down and, and give that private property back to the capitalist, back to the owner. Um, liberal society protects private property, um, for the individual first and foremost, meaning not personal property, not like your toothbrush, um, but like property that you own that allows you to make more money out of it. So capital. Then it's civil and political rights. So, you know, you have the right to free speech, you have the right to bear arms. Um, and a lot of times because private property are the roots of the tree, um, these political and civil rights are infringed upon when people threaten the right to private property. So like the Black Panthers, um, they were socialists. They were calling for an end to private property and a move towards collective property. Uh, so they were dismantled by the police, killed by the police, thrown in jail on trumped up charges. So they had their civil and political rights infringed upon because they were threatening private property, which the state will always do. They'll always prioritize private property. 
But in our system, you know, this is what's supposed to be protected, the right to say anything that you want, um, the right to arm yourself and protect yourself from the government. We know that it's not always true. Um, just look at what's happening with Julian Assange. So uh, Western liberal societies can't even live up to the own ideals that they set out for themselves. But this is what it's supposed to be. And then the top of the tree that grows out of this is identity politics. You know, we can't threaten private property. We can't threaten capitalism. So how do we move the, the system forward? Um, we do it by focusing on identity politics. You know, how do we not, how do we get um, low income black communities, more jobs, money, healthy food, um, infrastructure, that things that help a community thrive, right? We don't care about those things. We care about private property, but, you know, we can um, attack issues of identity politics. Like we can stop uh, people at work from doing microaggressions against black people. Um, all of our solutions fall short of criticizing the system itself, the core of the system, private property, which is the core of the system. Um, so then you just have to target these um, issues of identity politics and fight about them all day long. And that's where you get the polarization between conservatives and liberals who both love um, capitalism at the end of the day. Then you have the Hegelian or Marxist Chinese tradition much, much different. So rather than having private property at the roots, they have sovereignty, including anti-colonial sovereignty at the roots. Like I said, um, understanding that a people deserve the right to uh, um, their own land and to build the society, to build the state, to build the economy that they want. Um, and you can't have the construction of socialism. You can't have the construction of a new social system if a people are under control um, under the dominance of a foreign power, under the control of colonialism and imperialism. Um, so before we even talk about socialism and things like that, um, we need to talk about sovereignty and getting people there. Uh, they're protecting self-determination, which has often infringed upon by capitalism. Next, the trunk of the tree, right to economic well-being. Notice there's nothing about economic well-being in the liberal tree. Nothing about protecting economic well-being. That's not part of the liberal system. Because you can't protect economic well-being while also having private property be the roots of your tree. You can't have a society that's fully based on the private property of individuals, um, capitalist individuals, uh, and also um, enforce economic well-being. That would mean the state or the workers infringing on the rights of private property, saying, hey, we know this property is technically yours, um, but we're going to take part of the surplus that you create and use it to pay for health care and, and things like that. Um, that is what the Western liberal tradition is against, right? We support trickle-down economics. Zero regulation, just let the market do its thing. Um, except for, obviously, the, the liberal state, the imperialist apparatuses of Western capitalist liberal societies are paid for by taxes. And, you know, it is the government acting at the behest of the private property owners. Um, so the idea that liberal societies are anti big government is a total lie. Uh, but then at the top, then uh, after after people's sovereignty has been protected, and you can think about this in terms of China. Right. And this is the goals of China um, with their construction of socialism right now. After the sovereignty has been protected, after the country has defended themselves from imperialism and ensured everybody has right to economic well-being. So in China, obviously, they protected their sovereignty from the U.S. at every turn. And there's various methods of doing that, like the Great Firewall, which stops the U.S. from um, uh infiltrating China via the internet and using bot accounts and things like that that we were talking about earlier, uh, the same way they did in Libya and Syria to foment regime change. So China's protected their people's sovereignty. Next, they protected their people's economic well-being, the poverty alleviation programs, eliminating relative poverty, serving the people, um, protecting their economic interests. So after you've done that, then you can turn to civil, political, cultural, and environmental rights. And this is where, you know, you can find some criticisms of China. Right. You could point to like um, areas where maybe there have been where the state has overstepped their bounds um, or where there's racism present. Um, 
maybe not, you know, in the party or in the state itself, but in the interpersonal relationships between people, there's places where, you know, um, bigotry exists in China. Um, it's not like socialism, just abolish bigotry off across the board. So you can criticize these things. Um, but you can also look at how China has protected the civil, political, cultural and environmental rights. And they're doing much better than the U.S. Much better. They're transitioning these cities into like zero carbon eco cities. Um, they're like the the Uyghurs in um, in Western China, who the U.S., claims China is doing a genocide against, you know, they have their own autonomous zone. That that area of China is called the Uyghur autonomous zone, meaning they have auto autonomy. They have um, control of what goes on in that area, the religion that's practiced, the education. And that doesn't mean they can suppress others. You know, they can't say other people aren't allowed to practice their religion here, but their cultural um, and religious practices are protected and they're protected by the state. Um, so, yeah. Major difference between these two trees. This is just a great explainer. I recommend everybody um, check this out. I need to upload it somewhere so y'all can have it, but um, I'll figure that out. I'll put it in the Discord. Pat Cummings, what's up, Pat? Thank you very much. 20 bucks. Wow. You didn't need to do that. Thank you so much. Last night and the night before, I ate some delicious. Um, some delicious food from your son's hot sauce company. Um, Angry Hornet hot sauce. Oh, I thought I was wearing my uh, my hot sauce hat right now. I, I'm going to go get it. It's worth it. I said Angry Hornet. I meant to say Murder Hornet. I blanked on the name, but... Shout out to Pat's son, the owner of Murder Hornet Hot Sauce, the one and only sponsor of Midwestern Marks, uh, who sent us a bunch of hot sauce. And my roommate and I haven't gotten a chance to do another cooking video yet. I told him we got to do one. Um, but so thank you very much for the 20 bucks, though. Really appreciate the support. Not only does dropping bombs on the country hurt their economic well-being, but ever since the U.S. lost the Korean War, the U.S. has done everything they can to keep the DPRK in poverty, mostly by using the embargo, while at the same time, the U.S. does everything they can to boost the economy of South Korea. Eddie Liger-Smith in response to Chauvinist Bausch. Thank you, Jacob. I should put that on Twitter or something. That's a good quote. Um, yeah, I, I forgot I used Lacerdo's tree to debunk Vouch. So if you want a picture of the tree, um, I think you can probably go screen cap it out of that video or this one, honestly. But yeah, I use that tree to explain why we should support the sovereignty and the economic well-being of the DPRK, even though, you know, there are criticisms to be made of, you know, their civil, political and cultural environmental rights, even though they're doing better than the U.S. in reality. Um but yeah, I, that video, that video was more successful in bringing people to Marxism, bringing people to Marxism, Leninism and supporting existing socialism, uh, being a tanky than any other video we've ever done, right? which is why I try and engage with other content creators a little more now. And when there's like drama going down, I kind of try and capitalize on it to bring people to our side. Um, because that video is so successful, I had so many people tell me like, cause Vouch didn't always used to be as bad as he was now. He was more subtle about his pro NATO views. Um, so there were a lot of socialists who got tricked into watching Vouch and thinking he was right. And by bringing up that tree and just being like, Vouch is cheering on, you know, the U S state department, stripping the Korean people of their sovereignty and right to economic well-being, everything a Marxist should be against. You know, say what you want about um, the DPRK. The U.S. is doing that. Our country is doing that. Um, a lot of the Vouch fans didn't have anything to say or they had no response to that. And Vouch definitely had no response to that. His response videos were absurd. Um, so those who were open minded, uh, a lot of them changed their mind or at least, you know, came closer to to being a real socialist. <laughs> Thank you so much for rehashing the tree. You bet. I'm definitely going to put that on YouTube as a clip as well, and hopefully TikTok. Um, I was looking for that graphic in the viewer's 
found your TikTok of it. Am I a tanky on YouTube? Oh, very, very cool. Um, yeah, it's from Domenico Lacerdo. Thank you very much for the 10 bucks, by the way. Left is best. Um, left is best is awesome. Always supporting the podcast in every way. Um, not the pod, uh, not really a podcast, but supporting the project is what I meant to say. Um, I'm glad you like that tree and no problem for rehashing it. Um, I hope that y'all find that useful. Like I, this is why I was so excited when I found I was cleaning out the files on my computer and I found the tree. I'm like, let's go. It's Lacerdo's tree because it's hard to find. But like one of the best explainers of Marxism and, and the right to national self-determination you can get. Um, if you want. If you want something that expounds on the idea of national self-determination being the number one principle of communists, um, check out Stalin's Marxism and the National Question. Um, this lays out how, why socialists support right to self-determination first, why they should be at the forefront of the anti-colonial struggle, um, the struggle against imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. Um, so yeah, I know some people are like scared to read Stalin. I always tell people when they're starting out, like, and a lot of Marxist Leninists tell people when they're starting out, like, try Stalin, read Stalin. Uh, him and Mao, or Mao, you know, they simplified a lot of the theories for the working people of their country. But people are just so scared of of Stalin and Mao and, you know, the connotation that's attached to that. They don't really want to start with this, um, even though this would be one of the best books to start with or Foundations of Leninism, um, which I get, you know, which is why I have other books like um, Michael Parenti, or even like Jason Hickel's book, The Divide, I've recommended before, not even a Marxist book, just the book about the division of wealth between the global South and the global North and the effect imperialism has had on that. Um, yeah, I feel like there are other good intro texts that aren't written by like Stalin or Mao, but if people didn't think so poorly of Stalin and Mao because of the brainwashing, these would be good books to recommend.